we move to the next talk, which is called uh, Efficient Public Key Distance Bonding Protocol by uh, Andan Killing and uh, Serge Vaudenay. And uh, Andan is giving the talk. Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to present you um, our new distance bonding protocol as you see from the title. First of all I want to give a quick introduction about distance bonding. So all of the uh, applications that you see on the slide uh, are actually in our daily life and the common feature of all of them is that they let us to authenticate um, without contact. Unfortunately, all these applications are vulnerable for relay attacks. I want to explain uh, it with this following scenario. Here we have Butter, our victim, and also <coughs> we have our adversary, Cartman, here. And Butter has the credit card. And Cartman just comes close to <coughs> uh, the, uh, our victim. And then, uh, yeah. He has also his phone. And we have also Cartman's friends in this supermarket, which waits the signal from Cartman. And after they pay the phone and credit card, and also this phone and the payment terminal, uh, Cartman receives the signal from uh, Butter's credit card, and then just relays it to his friend's phone, and his friend's phone relays it to the payment terminal. And the same happens in the reverse order as well. Like that, in the end, Cartman is able to do payment with Butter's credit card without his permission. So the most promising solution for this is distance bonding protocol. And it was pr uh, introduced by uh, Brands and Sean. And this has a very simple idea. We have two parties, verifier and the prover. And in distance bonding, prover authenticates himself and also proves his proximity. And we have two types of distance bonding, public key distance bonding and symmetric key distance bonding. In symmetric case, the verifier and the prover share a secret, and in the public key case, uh, the prover and the verifier know each other's, uh, each other's public keys. And in uh, most of the application, it is more feasible to use public key distance bonding because we cannot uh, always assume that the two parties share a secret. However, public key distance bonding, uh, sorry, public key crypto has some problems. Uh, it is slower than uh, symmetric key operations. And also, the devices that we use distance bonding has limited resources. Therefore, it is very important to uh, construct uh, efficient public key distance bonding. So we want to have less public key operation while preserving the security. And this is the outline of my presentation. First, I will give uh, formal definitions about public key distance bonding. Then I will explain our new weak authenticated key agreement model, which we use in our protocol. And then I will uh, uh, describe our constructions. Uh, new protocols, FPKDB and its private variant. 
and uh, I will finalize my uh, presentation with a conclusion. Okay, first uh, let's define what is uh, public key distance funding more formally. So we have a B, it is a distance bond, which is uh, known by all the algorithms in the protocol. And we have two key generation algorithms, uh, KV and KP. They generate secret key public key pair for the verifier and the prover. And also we have other algorithms, verifier algorithm and prover algorithm. Uh, in the end of the execution of verifier algorithm, verifier outputs a bit out V and the private uh, output PKP. And uh, out V means that either reject or accept. Now I will describe the security model of uh, distance bonding. We consider several security uh, issues here. The first one is man in the middle. So uh, what basically we want here that uh, we want to protect honest and far away prover from the adversary. And we uh, it is defined with the, with the game. So in the game, uh, we first generate the secret key of the secret key public key of the prover and the verifier, and send the public key to the adversary. And in this game, we consider all of the instances of verifier and the prover. What I mean from the instance is that it is uh, each new execution of the prover algorithm and the verifier algorithm. For example, it is an instance where the prover algorithm is uh, run when prover is far away from the verifier and here is the adversary. And this is another instance where the prover is just close to the verifier and so on. And between all of these instances, we consider one of them as a distinguished one under the condition that there is no close and honest prover to the verifier. And in the end of the game, if the distinguished verifier uh, accepts the prover and outputs its public key, then adversary wins. And if a distance bonding protocol is made in the middle secure, the success probability of adversary should be negligible. And the other security model is distance fraud. In distance fraud, we want to prevent uh, uh, malicious and far away prover to authenticate himself. And again, we uh, define it with a game. Uh, here, we first generate the verifier's key and send the public key of the verifier to the adversary. Here, our adversary is the prover. And then prover just generates his secret key and public key with an arbitrary algorithm. Again, we consider the, all of the instances of verifier and prover. For example, here, he is far away. And here, he is close, and so on. And between all of them, one of them is the distinguished one, and where we uh, look at the output of this distinguished verifier. And in this distinguished one, there shouldn't be any close prover to the verifier. And in the end, if the verifier, the distinguished verifier accepts the prover, then the adversary wins. And we want that the success probability of uh, this, uh, in this game, uh, the success probability of the adversary in this game is negligible. And the last security model is distance hijacking. Actually, this is the m more generalized version of the distance fraud. Here, uh, we want to prevent um, far away and malicious prover to authenticate himself by getting advantage of close and honest prover. And again, we define a game for this model. So we generate the uh, public key and secret key pair of the verifier and the honest prover. Honest prover is represented by P prime here. And then send the public keys to the adversary here. Adversary is P. Then uh, adversary, the prover generates his secret key public P key pair by an arbitrary algorithm. And as in the previous games, we again considered all the instances. For example, here, honest prover is close to verifier and um, malicious one is far away. And here, both of them are close and so on. And between all of them, we consider one of them is a distinguished one under the condition that there is no close and malicious prover to verifier. And in the end, 
if to distinguish verify accept the uh, malicious prover, then this prover wins. And as in the previous games, we want that the success progress of adversary is negligible in this game to have distance side checking security. Okay, lastly, I want to define the privacy very briefly. So we use HPVP model here. And basically what happens here, we have many provers and adversary. And adversary can corrupt uh, any provers, which means that he can learn the, their secret key. And in some moments he just picks uh, two provers and sends them as a challenge. And challenger simulate one of them. And if the, in the end of the game, if the adversary can recognize uh, who, uh, who is simulated by the challenger, then he wins. And if a distance farming is strong private, the adversary, uh, the advantage of adversary in this game should be negligible. And before proceeding the next section, I would like to give the overview of our protocol. So in our protocol, what we do is that the first verifier and the prover agree on a secret S by a key agreement protocol. And then they run a symmetric key distance bonding protocol with the agreed key S. So the part we need public key operation is the key agreement part. And we wonder that what do we really need from this agree key agreement protocol to achieve MIM security, BF security, and BH security. When we look at the previous key agreement protocol security models, CK and ECK, and also the protocols here which uh, achieves this uh, level of security, we see that efficiency actually is not good. Here efficiency shows that number of exponentiation is done. And we wonder, do we really need that level of security from the, this key agreement protocol? And the answer is no. Therefore, we defined weak authenticated key agreements. In weak key agreement, authenticated key agreements, we have only one message, which is sent by the party B. And this message is picked from the distribution B. And after A receiving, uh, receiving this N, uh, they both compute secret S by running the algorithms A and B. So this is the uh, framework of one type key agreement protocol. And also we define a security model for that by defining a game. And the name of our game is BATA game, Decisional Authenticated Key Agreement. Here uh, the challenger first generates the keys for the party A and B. And then also we have Oracle B and Oracle A. So Oracle B is inputted by secret key of and secret key and public key of the party B, and Oracle A is inputted by secret key and public key of party A. And uh, we have these oracles which run the, uh, B, uh, the algorithm B and A. After the challenger just sends a PTA A to the Oracle B, and Oracle B uh, sends N and S0. So N is picked from this distribution and S0 is the output of B. And also he randomly picks a, a secret S1. Then he just picks a bit B and then sends this SB and PKB and PK to the adversary. So here SB is either randomly picked or it is generated by the algorithm B. An adversary can access all these oracle except that he cannot input PKB and N to the oracle A. In the end of the game, if he outputs a bit B prime, and if B prime equals B, he wins. So if a one type key agreement protocol is BAK secure, uh, the advantage of adversary should be negligible in this game. And also we define BAK privacy uh, for uh, one type key agreement protocol. Here we want to protect the um, privacy of the party B. So here uh, challenger generates the keys for A and B. And we have only uh, Oracle A. After the challenger sends PKA and also secret key and public key of party B to the adversary. 
adversary also generates secret key and public key pair for the party B and sends them to the challenger. After that, challenger picks a bit B and uh, 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 computes the message N from the distribution D and runs the algorithm B either from the secret key that he generated or the secret key public key pair that adversary generated. And then send the S, the output of B, to the adversary. Adversary can access the oracle A, and in the end he outputs a bit B prime. If B prime equals B, then he wins. If a key agreement protocol is DAK private, the success, uh, advantage of the adversary in this game should be negligible. So basically, uh, here adversary knows the secret key, but uh, he shouldn't able to distinguish uh, which secret key is used. Okay. And also, we propose the one path key agreement protocol, which is DAK secure and DAK private. We call it as non-CH. In non-CH, we have public parameter, a group, a prime order group, and its generator G. And the parties pick their secret key from the queue, and the public key is just G to the secret key. After that, uh, the party B picks a message from LBT strings and sends it to the party A, and then they compute uh, this function H. So if you look at the input of the function H, you will see that they are equal. And we prove that this uh, protocol, non-CH is DAK secure and DAK private. Uh, in the random oracle model, assuming that gap disarmament problem is hard. And so now we can look at the previous uh, protocols and our protocol. As you see, we are much more efficient. We only need one exponentiation. We have weaker security, but it's not a problem. It is enough for our purpose, to, because our main purpose is to uh, construct a secure distance bonding protocol. Okay. Now I can explain what is our protocol. The first one is FPKDB. Here, uh, prover just uh, picks N from the distribution, D, and sends N and his public key to the verifier. And then verifier and the prover generate secret S using the algorithm A and B. After that, they run a symmetric distance bounding protocol S using this uh, S that they generated, and after uh, verify just output uh, his message, which means it's either reject or accept. And we pro proved that uh, FPKDB is the mean secure, DS secure, and DH secure under the conditions that you see here, the bold ones. For example, when we look at mean security, we need from SIMDB to mod verify uh, one time mean secure, and uh, we want from the key agreement protocol to be uh, DAK secure. So what I mean from one time mean secure is that it is enough to have uh, security, uh, mean security, uh, even, I, how can I explain? So if we run the SIMDB one time, it is secure. So if we run second time, it is not secure anymore, which is weaker security notion than uh, normal mean security. So basically what we need from weaker uh, distance bonding protocol SIMDB, uh, we can construct a fully secure mean CT. And this is the private variant, which is very simple. Here the uh, prover's public key uh, has two parts, PKV1 and PKV2. So here as usual prover generates N and encrypts this N with his public key with the public key of the verifier and sends it to the verifier. And then verifier decrypts and learns the messages. Then they generate the secret S and run symmetric key distance bounding protocol with this S. Here PKP is the private output of uh, verifier. And we proved that um, <coughs> this, strong, uh, this private variant of FPKDB is uh, strong private in HPUP model if the key agreement protocol is DAK private and the crypto system is in TCH secure. So
So I gave you a framework about our protocol. What I said that we first need to use the key agreements protocol and then run a symmetric key distance bonding. So this is an instance of uh, our um, framework for FPKDB. So for a key agreement protocol, we can use non-CH. The pink part is non-CH. I explained already. And then for a symmetric key distance bonding, we can use OTDB, which is uh, one-time secure distance bonding protocol. And how it works, here first the verifier picks a nonce and sends it to the prover. After that, they XOR uh, the secret S and nonce and get A. And then challenge phase begins. In challenge phase, the uh, verifier sends the BCI, it is challenge, and starts the timer. After receiving it, the prover uh, computes the response, it's like that, and sends the response to the verifier, and the verifier stops the timer. After end rounds like that, the verifier checks if all the responses arrived on time, like that, by uh, checking if the round trip time is less than to be or not, and checks if all the responses are correct. So if everything is okay, in the end, the verifier accepts the prover and output his message. And I want to conclude my presentation by comparing our uh, distance bonding protocol with the previous one. So here you see column for security, privacy, and the public key operations uh, needed to compute this uh, distance bonding protocol as number of computations required. So for example, when we look at HPO, and our private variants of FPKDB, we have a stronger security and stronger privacy, and we have less, we need less operation on the prover side. And the uh, pre-DB security is the uh, same with our private variants of FPKDB, and we are slightly more efficient than this. And also we have one more advantage against PreDB, which is that we have also non-private variant, FPKDB. Like that, since not all applications requires privacy, in this case it is feasible to use FPKDB instead of pr uh, private variant of uh, FPKDB. And this is the end of my presentation. And I would like to conclude my presentation with an announcement. So our lab is uh, searching for postdocs. Uh, we are in, at EPFS. So if you want to apply for it, or if you know someone who wants to apply, this is the contact me. Thank you for attention. Uh, we have time for one question. Uh, just have one. Uh, did you consider to remove the gap assumption using the two indicial man uh, trick? Uh, sorry, I don't hear. Did you consider to remove the gap assumption from your protocol using the computational uh, diffie-man assumption, for example? Um, we couldn't prove it with computational diffie-man. We tried, it didn't work. Even with the cache kill, it's a shoot technique? Mm. We didn't try that one. Okay, let's thank uh, Andan again. Mm -hmm.